Okay, before we start with the sprint qualifying today, I wanted to do a little video. I forgot a little bit, little, I forgot a few things in the last preview video and a couple of developments have happened since then, so I wanted to go over it. First of all, I completely forgot that they redid the entire track at Brazil. Interlagos has been completely resurfaced and there's a few little changes that we wanna keep in mind before we do any of this qualifying today. But before we start all that, subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you got a second and let's get started. So these are the changes that are made. The biggest thing to uh, look at is the track and the pit lane have been uh, fully resurfaced and we'll go over some of this stuff and what it means. But before that, let's go to a track map. So this is the actual track map that we have. I wanna highlight some particular things, but first of all, we'll go over what has changed in the surface. So the surface, there's two big things. Well, it's really three big things that are, are different about it, but two of them are head level kind of stuff. So first of all, the surface that is laid down is slipperier than it was before. And the micro and macro levels of the roughness of the track have decreased somewhere between 40 and 50%. There's some math that goes on there. It really doesn't mean anything to me and you. The percentage is only to so you know that there is less surface roughness to the track. Okay, so what do I mean when I say micro and macro? So macro texture usually affects, and I have I had to write this down because I've been doing a lot of research on texture because there's been so many resurfacing things that have gone on this year. So ma uh, macro texture is high speed. That is overall how bumpy the asphalt or the surface layer is on the track. So this is what you would see. Imagine this is a cutout section of the track. Macro is how many bumps there are, basically, how rough it is. Micro is low speed kind of stuff, usually, and it's how textured those bumps are. So that's all you really need to know. Macro is how bumpy the surface is. If you were to say, these are all in, uh, in uh, millimeters and micrometers, but macro is like 0.5 to five millimeters or something like that. And that's kind of what the macro texture is. And then you get into thousands and tenths of a millimeter um, when you get into micro textures. High speed grip is macro, low speed grip is micro. The transition of those as well really matters too. So if you're in uh, a high speed section going into a low speed section, it really is going to chase the surface of the track where your car grips up is not going to be the same as last year. But the other thing, and this is kind of key to this as well that has changed for Interlagos, is the, tech, the, the color of the track is much more black. And what does that mean? Well, it means track temperatures are up really high. Last year, we had low 50s for the track temperature. Now, it was a very odd kind of year for weather for Brazil. Apparently we had El Nino or El Nino. I can't remember which one it is. Anyway, it was overly cool and windy and rainy when at this time of year, that's kind of almost stopped. But what we have now is a track that was doing about 52 degrees in the sun. And now they had it on Thursday and they did a track temp, a track temp of 60 degrees in the sun. So it's hotter, which really it does several things and we'll get all into this but it almost counteracts the slipperiness of a less rough track almost but it'll be a different way that that all works together uh it will equate the same amount of grip levels but not everybody will be the same because they all produce their grip a little bit differently just because of car design and it will definitely not be the same as last year because you're getting to a grip level, but you're getting there in different directions. And if we see the sun go away, even in a cloudy day, you're gonna see a lot of those grip levels completely disappear. So what do we got here? So we'll have higher deg from sliding, a less grippy track. You're gonna slide around a lot more, especially not so much the macro texture because we already established that's high speed. Now, high speed for a Formula One car is a lot different than a road car. This document is for actually just kind of regular roads rather than uh, a racetrack, but it was just to give you an idea of what those words mean. But as far as the track goes, the high speed sections here are numerous. So turn three is, uh, is high speed, turn five is high speed, six is high speed, 11 is high speed, 13, 14, 15 are all high speed. Turn one is not, turn two is not. The inside of course from turn seven to kind of 10 and then 12 are not high speed, but the lot of this track is high speed. But we really don't know 
where those grip levels will start up. Like, at what point does turn three become good grip uh, as far as not sliding around too much? We won't really know. It definitely won't be the same as next uh, last year, which is a shame. That is a shame because last year, uh, Interlagos was great, especially that the way that they positioned the DRS sections. The two detection zones is a great uh, addition for, for the track, the way that they changed that. So that was really good from last year. But we'll also see thermal dig. Uh, and that's something we've seen recently, especially on the soft tires, you'll see sliding around dig, which is like graining, actually ripping off the tire and your tire wearing away from literal wear. And then thermal dig, which will be from the tire being too hot, it becoming creme brulee on the outside and also slipping off. So you're going to see that a lot more. The track's going to be hotter, but it's going to be slipperier. So the degradation is going to be through the roof. Uh, Ferrari has proved that they're fairly kind on their tires these days, not so much earlier in the season, and McLaren is incredibly, incredibly easy on their tires. We've also seen the Williams be quite good, uh, at least in comparison to what they used to be, and we see the Haas have gotten over their tire issue problems. Red Bull, kind of an unknown. I don't know. They're always changing so much, so I don't know really where they are. From what Max complained last race in Mexico, not really all that good, I don't think. I think their tire deg is unfavorable, at least on a hard tire. On the mediums, I'm not sure. They seem to be a little bit better on that. It will definitely be a medium hard race, though. And Pirelli has brought a softer tire as well, so they're uh, one step softer than they were last year. I think they were trying to, they knew that this track is going to be a little bit slipperier, so they were trying to counteract that. But I think because of the thermal deg, it might actually be a bad thing. We're not going to see much of the hard tires, or uh, the soft tires. We're not going to see much of the soft tires, but because it's a sprint weekend, their allocation of tires is much different. So you might want to use a hard tire on Saturday for the sprint race because a medium or a soft might not even last a sprint race. And this is definitely for the race, a two stopper normally, unless there's a big accident or something like that, or a lot of yellow flags. But normally you would want to have all those hard tires for Saturday, uh, for Sunday, for in the race, but you might have to sacrifice this to do it well on, on, on Saturday for the sprint race really does complicate things here. They're not going to, but if we see rain, that's totally going to change the look of the weekend. So a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, so tire one step softer, tire locations, the sprint grip levels sim will be similar, but only due to heat. The last thing, last two things, one, we don't have any more support races, so we don't have an F2 and F3. And they're the kind of play, uh, kind of support races that really do rubber up the track. Keep in mind when F2 goes and F3, they have sprint races as well. So they're practicing, qualifying, sprinting, and racing all at the same time. They rubber up a track really well. We don't have that going on here. All we have is Porsche Cup and F4 Brazil. So the Brazilian circuit of F4 and the Porsche Cup, which the F4 will rubber up the track. The Porsches, not really. I mean, they'll undirty a track, but sometimes they have big accidents and cause some uh, fluid loss on the track. They are a conventional internal combustion engine, which tends to leak a little bit, especially if it's Porsche, <coughs> crappy Porsche. But we don't have a lot of that adding to the track plus we also have a sprint so you're going to see evolution insanely high if we see rain not so much because the rain is going to wick away any sort of evolution that you have there but if we see any dry qualifying sessions you want to be the absolute last car across the line because the difference between a minute of a minute 30 of cars going around the track you're going to see improvement of tenths in that time frame, you're going to see that improvement. So you want to be the last person across the line. And we're definitely going to see that kind of stuff. So that's the track changes. We also have some other stuff that went on. Not too much. The only thing really noted other than it looks like they made some new openings on the turn run and the main straight to try to get rid of cars. You remember we had that big accident last year. Um, we had, I believe it was Ricardo and somebody else, somebody got hit by a wheel that came over and everybody crashed in the first corner and it took a long time to clean up because they couldn't get all the cars out because they only had one access point. Looks like they cured that new opening on the start finish and at turn one and at turn 15. So they fixed that issue. The only other thing to note is turn seven. It looks like they've taken away grass and added concrete. I don't know. I don't have any pictures, but this is turn seven. If you don't know, this is fast. 
This is a hard left-hander and then it's quite fast in through here. This turn doesn't necessarily really exist for a Formula One car, but your braking zone is around here, like just after turn seven. So if they've gotten rid of grass there, it's called it grass pavers, which I don't, grass pavers. I don't know what that means. Is that fake grass maybe? But it looks like it's both on the left hand, right hand side. So on the right hand side, that's where you drive on the track to take that line. You wanna take it really tight here, let it wash out for turn eight and come in. Uh, if they've changed that to concrete, uh, these drivers will use every bit of concrete because concrete has a ton of more grip. If you remember Monzo that they changed, if you came out of the second chicane, cars would put their tire right on a concrete strip that had a white line on it. And they would get tons of grip to be able to put their tire on what was about half of width of tire, uh, just enough for a contact patch. And they would get two tenths out of that corner just from being on that concrete. Whereas if you went on the asphalt, you wouldn't get that speed. And if you went off the track, you wouldn't get that speed. Concrete is very, very, very grippy. You know why? Because it's macro and micro texture is incredibly high. Uh, that's why you can, if you know about old brake discs on a car, you can actually uh, rub off uh, some of the scour marks from brake discs by just rubbing them on uh, a concrete floor or something like that. Okay, what else? We have this technical delegate. This is all the units used. There is rumor that Max will take a five second grid penalty. Not a 10, but he'll only take an ICE engine unit. They believe that all the other electronics will last the end of the year. Uh, all those four units that they see on the screen there on Max Verstappen's car, if any of those, the H, the K, or the TC, any one of those fail, or the ES, or the C, or the EX, any of that kind of stuff fails. Uh, actually, not the EX, I think they have eight of those. But the other ones, if you go into three and four, any of that fails and he's taking uh, penalties for changing that. So they're only changing an ICE. So it looks like that engine from last time was not good. He'll go down to fifth. What's it gonna qualify like? Hard to say with Max, he's really good at qualifying. He's an excellent driver. So he could put technically on pole before penalties. So fifth, he would come. Uh, but Leclerc is very, very quick around here. Hamilton also is an excellent Interlagos driver and it wouldn't put it past him to be up where he necessarily probably shouldn't be, probably somewhere near pole. And then you never know from Lando and McLaren, they might actually put something together as well as Piastri can be quite dangerous on a Saturday. So look for those kind of things in there. Max might end up potentially being 7th, 8th, ninth if he doesn't put in a good run. If we see rain as well, that's going to be a big factor as well. Now keep in mind that penalty is only for Sunday, not for the sun Saturday sprint. So if he's able to put it on pole, he might be able to start right off the bat there at the front. Uh, but then would take the penalty only for Sunday. The last thing is, it looks as though Kevin Magnuson is ill. I didn't read what it was, it only came out a little while ago, uh, but it looks like Ollie Berman will at least be in the car for the practice, the sprint qualifying, and then the sprint race, and then there may be this see Kevin Magnuson come back for uh, Sunday if he's feeling well enough. Uh, again, it doesn't really say, Replace Kevin Magnuson until further notice. Driver 50 is required to use the engine, gearbox, and everything the same. Blah, 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 blah. Doesn't really say what is wrong with Kevin. We also know that uh, Fernando Alonso had some sort of stomach bug. So might have been related, although I think uh, Fernando's was actually like a literal gut problem, not necessarily something that they could pass around, but it, it appears that Kevin Magnuson is also not well. So he will be replaced by Oliver Run. Check that out. It should be very interesting. The Haas is very quick and Ollie is not that bad in a car, although Kevin Magnuson was excellent in Mexico. I think he did really, really well. He was my driver of the day really kind of almost and then qualifying of the day he did really well uh, as well he actually beat out Hulkenberg who is historically been a little bit quicker but that's all I wanted to go over today just some of the track circuit changes good to hit that kind of stuff up enjoy your sprint qualifying today and I'll see you guys to after the sprint qualifying for that video and tomorrow for the sprint race and regular qualifying don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a second. And I'll see you guys then.